listening to the Pharmacist Answers Podcast. I'm Cynthia, the pharmacist, and today you'll get your questions answered and your curiosity cured. I've done some other periscopes about sleep, how to better prepare yourself for sleep, the benefits of getting enough sleep. Bethany Jett, she had said, I need something that can actually help me fall asleep. And a lot of us say that. So to be able, instead of spending two hours laying in bed wishing that you would sleep, but your mind is racing, having something that can help you go to sleep. But there are, I counted them today, there's six different categories of sleep aids that you can use. Two of them are over the counter and everything else is prescription. And I'm talking specifically about pharmaceutical kind of things. I know there's a lot of things you can do with essential oils that you can use for sleep, like lavender. Use Xanax at times. Yes, and the the group of medications that Xanax is in is one of the groups I'm going to talk about today. Yes, and lavender. Lavender is um, is an essential oil. It's a natural product that, that helps calm and relax the body. So in the vein of um, talking about natural products, um, there's two natural products that you can actually buy in pill form at your pharmacy. One is melatonin. Melatonin is the chemical that your brain makes when it gets dark. So when the sun goes down and the light is gone, your brain starts making melatonin, and that helps your brain go to sleep. So if you watch TV at night, just the technology and the, the electronics that we use, that type of light can interfere with the melatonin production of your brain naturally. And so melatonin is the most natural thing for you to take in supplement because your body makes it, it recognizes it, so it knows what to do with it. It doesn't have to work too hard to use it. So you can take melatonin. It comes between 1 and 10 milligrams it per tablet. 10 milligrams is kind of the max that's recommended um, unless the doctor gives you instructions to do otherwise. Um, then the second thing that is a natural product that you can get over the counter is valerian root. And it's a plant. It's been used to help with calming and relaxation. It doesn't necessarily induce sleep with anything in your brain. It is claimed to, to help calm and relax you so that then you can fall asleep naturally. It doesn't have a lot of drug interactions like some herbals do. It doesn't have a lot of extra side effects like people complaining of like a drunk hungover feeling after you wake up or anything like that. So so those are relatively safe to be able to use. The other things over the counter are antihistamines, the first generation antihistamines, which is going to be your Benadryl, which is diphenhydramine, that's the generic name, and then doxylamine is an antihistamine that is in Unisom, and it's also the ingredient in NyQuil that helps you fall asleep. So the first generation antihistamines have a natural drowsy side effect to them anyway. So to be able to take them to turn your brain off to be able to go to sleep, that is, that's a safe option. Now all of these sleep aids over the counter, natural or prescription should never be taken with alcohol. Anytime you compound multiple things that induce sleep, you're asking for trouble, whether it's difficulty waking up the next morning, whether it's a depression in your breathing, whether it's a depression in your heart rate, those kinds of things are not necessarily good for you. So don't ever mix any of these things with alcohol. I just have to say that. You're probably smart enough to do that anyway, but I just have to say it out loud. To get to the prescription options, there is a prescription medication. It only comes as brand. It doesn't have a generic net yet. It's called Rosarum. And it is actually a melatonin-inducing drug. It goes into your brain to the cells that are supposed to produce melatonin and tells them to make melatonin. Again, melatonin is your sleep chemical that your brain makes naturally to help you go to sleep. So maybe your brain isn't making enough and you can take this medication to help you make more so your body is using its natural, its natural chemicals to fall asleep. Then the next class is the hypnotics. And that sounds scary, um, but the Ambien, Sonata, Lunesta, they're the ones that are advertised over and over and over again on TV with the direct-to-consumer advertising. They are in a class called Hypnotics, and they actually kind of seduce your brain to sleep. 
but it's not a very natural sleep. And that is why they come with a lot of warnings when it comes to, to high risk activities. Um, you don't want to take them and then like try to stay awake. They have um, side effects where people have dreams or they may end up acting out their dreams because part of your sleep cycle is as you go down the levels of sleep, your body has a process where it paralyzes you. So even though in REM sleep you're dreaming and your brain is really active during all of this detox cleansing out process that it goes through and resetting the neurons, your body is paralyzed so you don't actually act out those things. So if you've actually induced an unnatural sleep, then that process may not take effect. So that's why people have stories of taking Ambien and sleep driving or sleepwalking or sleep eating and all of these things that people do in their sleep. That's crazy and they have no memory of doing them. But their body wasn't paralyzed even though their brain was their brain was dreaming about it and so they were end up acting that out. And those medications also have a tendency to to lead to dependence. So they are are classified as controlled substances and have a lot of regulations for doctors writing them and pharmacies dispensing them and all of that stuff. Some people get really good benefit out of them, but it's the pros and cons. You got to weigh weigh your options um, to see if that if the risk is gonna is gonna be less than than the benefit that you would get. And then there's the benzodiazepines, and that's what Donna mentioned, the Xanax. Benzodiazepines is also a class of controlled substances. They are medications, the generic names, they end in LAM, L-A-M, or PAM, P-A-M. So Xanax is Alprazolam, Lorazepam, Triazolam, Timazepam, Diazepam. All of these LAMs and PAMs are benzodiazepines, and they can, they can induce sleep as well. Again, they can come with side effects. A lot of people complain of having a hangover feeling from some of them the next morning because it doesn't wear off fast enough while they're sleeping. So the medication effect lasts longer than the number of hours that you need to sleep. So that can be a problem. And again, they're a controlled substance. Sure, hippy dippy, that's so, that's so cute. I'm a pharmacist. I learned all of this stuff. But I want people to use as natural a solution as possible that works for them. And I know that there are probably lots and lots of people that can um, clean up their sleep hygiene and fix their sleep habits and try to do that. And they'll try the natural options. And for whatever reason, the physiological, neurological processes in their brain still does not allow them to sleep. And that's when the pharmaceuticals can, can be beneficial. So, I, like, I totally understand. I, I want people to use a natural option if that's going to work efficiently for them. But I understand that, that sometimes that may not be the best, that may not still work. And so there are actual medical, physiological things that lead to needing something else to help, to help with sleep. So that's the benzodiazepines. And then the last group is, is actually tricyclic antidepressants. A symptom of depression, one is that you sleep too much. The other is insomnia, which is kind of sounds backwards, but it's true. It can, insomnia can be a symptom of depression. But for people who have sleep problems, one, if you have depression, then you may have insomnia. But if you have insomnia, then you're probably feeling kind of depressed or at least moody and on edge. I have a six month old baby, so I'm kind of sleep deprived. So I know the effect that not getting sleep has on my mood, whether it comes to my moodiness or it just comes with my ability to cope with stresses and negative things that come up in, in life on a daily basis. It's kind of this spiral of you're depressed, but you don't sleep. And the fact that you don't sleep, you get more depressed. But tricyclic antidepressants, insomniac since you've been in high school. And again, there are actual physiological things that go on in your head with your body and your body's ability to make certain chemicals. Wow, that's a long time to be an insomniac. But your body's ability to make chemicals or over making one chemical but not making enough of the, the other chemical. SSRIs, that is specifically for depression. Some people say that taking an SSRI helps them sleep. It doesn't necessarily induce sleep, but getting that balance of those chemicals in your brain improves your wake sleep cycle anyway. So, the tricyclic antidepressants, in really low doses, you may not be treating depression, but again, because you get that balance of the chemicals in your brain balanced back out, 
then your body is ready to be awake when it's daylight and it's ready to go to sleep when it's nighttime. Because your, I said your sleep chemical is melatonin. When it's dark outside and you don't have sunlight stimulating the cells in your eyes that tells your brain to make serotonin, which is your, your wake up, your happy chemical, the replacement to serotonin is melatonin. So melatonin comes up when it gets dark, you go to sleep. Then when you wake up and the light stimulates your eyes, then your brain makes serotonin and serotonin helps you do all the things while you're awake. Back before we had technology and electricity and all of this stuff, that's essentially how human the human race functioned. When it was nighttime, it was way too dark to try to do anything, so you just went to sleep. And then when the sun came up, you did as much work as you possibly could. It gets dark here at 1030. Yeah, and that's the thing about the summer. It's one of the things that I like about the summer when it comes to mornings, but it's one of the things I hate about the summer when it comes to nighttime because I want to go to sleep and I want to have my eight hours of sleep, but if it doesn't get dark until almost 10 o'clock, then like my brain just isn't stimulated. Even if I try to turn off the TV and keep the lights dim and all of the right things that I'm supposed to do, which I don't always do, even though I'm trying to teach people about it, we're all guilty. Like, I like it because the sun comes up at 5.45 in the morning, so then I can get up at 6 o'clock and I have all of this daylight and I'm actually in a good mood. So in the wintertime, um, which is a problem about with seasonal affective disorder, it's sad. And it, you feel sad because you don't have enough daylight and your body isn't able to function. Our body depends on the sunlight. So during the day, we want as much natural light as we can get because that's what stimulates those happy chemicals in our brain to put us in a good mood, to make us feel energized. But then at night, we want that light to go away as much as we can, even though we live in a house that has electricity, so that your brain knows to create your sleep chemicals to help you go to sleep better. And so, again, I'm a big proponent of doing things to help you sleep as naturally as possible. But if there are physiological, neurological things going on with your body, then that may not necessarily work. And then the pharmaceuticals are there for you and your doctor to to make the best decision of what's going to work for you. Sometimes people have problems falling asleep. Other times people have problems waking up halfway through sleep and then having trouble to go back to sleep for the rest of the night. And that's where the conversation with with a medical doctor to to prescribe something like this for you is, is the best option. Things like the benzodiazepines, the hypnotics, the tricyclic antidepressants, those are typically ones that you're going to take at the beginning of sleep, but you really don't want to take them in the middle of the night because you want to make sure that that effect wears off before it's time for your alarm to go off and you get up for the day because you don't want that that over that hungover feeling from being medicated. Some people can take antihistamines halfway through the night and wake up because Benadryl and NyQuil kind of stuff um, wear off four to six hours. So if you wake up four hours into sleep and you're going to need four more or five more, then you can take that and it'll be worn off in time. Benadryl makes me sleepy for like half a day, so I, I that would not be an option for me. Um, but melatonin is an option that if you are able to fall asleep naturally, but you wake up halfway through the night, then you can take melatonin to be able to get the rest of that sleep. So again, depending on what your sleep habits are, depending on what things you've tried, those are the, that's the kind of information that you want to be armed with and be very familiar with about yourself so that way if you have to go talk to a doctor, what about side effects of ambient like sleep eating? Yes, melatonin is safe for nursing. Again, because your brain already makes melatonin, so having extra melatonin isn't going to isn't going to be a problem. But Ambien and the sleep eating, that's one of the things I talked about it a little earlier. Ambien because Ambien doesn't induce a natural sleep pattern, it kind of in it kind of seduces your brain to sleep in an unnatural way. Your body isn't able to go through the natural levels of sleep. So there's like four levels of sleep. And so you like level three is REM and that's where you dream. And then level four is your deep sleep where you're with rest and restoration. Because Ambien induces you into an unnatural level of sleep. If you hit level three in your REM and you start dreaming, then your body hasn't completed the process of paralyzing you while you sleep. 
So your REM dreams, your body tries to act out. And so, and that's the way that your natural, your natural sleep process happens. As you fall asleep, your body releases the chemical that helps paralyze your body. So if, when you hit REM and you start dreaming, you're not trying to act out all of the things that you dream about because if anybody's like me, you dream crazy dreams sometimes. Then you're glad that like it was just a dream. So you don't want to actually be acting that out. So if you have a medication that gets you to a certain level of sleep before your body has completed the whole rest of the process, then you're going to hit rim and start dreaming before your body's paralyzed. And that's how people can act things out like eating and walking and driving and jumping out windows and good Lord, who knows what else. And then they don't remember it because it was a dream in their head, but their body wasn't contained by that paralysis process. So hopefully this helped you out. Being a pharmacist, I don't mind people coming to me and asking me questions. I love being able to answer questions and educate people. And one of the reasons I like educating people is because I want people to be able to have the information if they have to go to their doctor and say, this is what I need, rather than the doctor just saying, oh, you just must be wanting something. You can have a bit of information to help make the best decision for you rather than the doctor just giving you prescriptions for whatever or choosing a treatment option that after you get home and the decision's been made, you say, I don't think that was really the best option. So I want people to be armed with with health information so they can be a part of the decision making when it comes to your own health. Yeah, winding down is the worst part. And one of my periscopes this last week Um, I actually talked about sleep hygiene and the things that you can do and get into your routine to be able to teach your body to wind down and get ready for bed rather than go, 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 go. And then I lay down in the bed and I expect to fall asleep because that fails 100% of the time. Um, Unless you're completely exhausted. Yeah, trying to relax your mind. It's very hard. Like I get creative at night. And so it's it's really a bummer to be able to to have to like lay down and then try to get my mind to be like, stop thinking about stuff. You can think about this tomorrow. Thanks for listening to the Pharmacist Answers podcast. The pharmacy is now closed. You can post your questions and comments on our Facebook page. That's facebook.com slash farm answers pod. Or you can email the show at pharmacist answers here at gmail.com. You can tweet me or message me on Twitter at Sin Hendricks. You can find the show notes at pharmacist answers here dot Pharmacist Answers broadcasts live on Monday, Wednesday, and Thursday at 9.02 a.m. Eastern Time on the Periscope app. You can follow me at Sin Hendricks or view in your web browser at periscope.tv slash Sin Hendricks. See you next time on the Pharmacist Answers podcast.